Hey friends. Hey, welcome. Come on in to Mama P's Kitchen. I know that Miss Christy is finishing up her segment in Crafters in the Kitchen and I am up right after her and I thought I would just get on and say hi. <laughs> and we can hang out just a minute and chat while everybody gets wrapped up and over here. So I hope you're having a good day. I really hope you're having a great day, really. And uh, today has been my first day back babysitting since I was out of town last weekend. And so it's just been a nice kind of snuggly up day um, with the grandbaby. She is currently napping. And the chances of her napping for another solid hour are very slim. So I'm going to tell you, hey, Kendra, that there's a very likely chance I will have to walk out of the kitchen and go get the baby. Hey, Miss Cheryl, but that's okay. That's what we have to do, right? You guys will forgive me for that. So her little chair is sitting over there empty for now. Hey, how are you? Hey, Patsy. Welcome. Welcome in. Come on in, guys. Grab you something to drink. I have a um, Diet Coke and a cup of coffee going. I don't know what's, uh, what time of day it is currently, <laughs> so I'm just trying everything, I guess. Hey, Miss Sherry. Hey, Mary. Come on in. Come on in. Well, you can see beside me that there is no air fryer in sight. Hey, Anne Marie. I also own a big deep fryer, but I didn't haul it in for today either. Um, I told Miss Jimmy Lou when she had her event and we were getting a little close to time that I don't air fry. She said, that's okay. We'll just change it to fried. <laughs> oh, Sherry, it was so good. It was so, so good. That soup is the best winter soup. Well, Patty, grab you a cup. I'm still drinking mine too. I'm still drinking mine too. Hey, Debbie, how are you? Hey, so today we are cooking up my mama's signature meal maybe. Hey Debbie, I don't remember my mama cooking a lot. I mean, I think she cooked almost every day while I was younger for sure. Hey Judy, um, but she didn't love cooking like I do. And so there weren't very many meals that she truly enjoyed cooking. Um, we would have pork chops and green beans and mac and cheese or everything um, was canned or boxed and most of the meat was fried. That's what I remember. I remember a few signature dishes that you will never see me make like neck bones and sauerkraut. I don't know if any of you have ever heard, hey Christina, of that little gem, but that was one of my mom's favorites. Hey Stacy, and I could smell that sauerkraut when I would get off of the bus after school and I wouldn't want to go home, you guys. <laughs> I'm like, I can I go home with you? Um, she on occasion made liver and onions and you'll never see that come out of my kitchen either. Hey Diane, oh, vegetable soup sounds so good. So good, let me grab the bread real quick and show you. Um, because it's handy and I can do that. So um, here is one loaf of bread, it's cut in two pieces. But this is the texture that we get of the bread. It is a fairly heavy, dense bread. Cheryl, I cannot do sauerkraut. My husband likes it on a hot dog and I, mm, no. Um, and you can hear it. You hear that sound? When you're baking bread, you want it to kind of get to a hollow sound. Um, and so that is, that is what the daily bread comes out like. And the next time, next week when we're together, I'll have it at step two. So I'll have the dough risen and then we will make it into loaves. So there it is sliced. Okay, we, I love it. I love it. We will eat this exclusively all winter long. Hello, hey guys, come in. But today we're cooking a meal that my mom actually, I think she was proud of it. And it was, your ex did too, he was from Missouri. Sorry, maybe it's a Missouri thing. Um, and that was pan fried chicken with pan fried potatoes and white cream gravy made in the chicken drippings. So that's what we're making today. So it's all fried <laughs> and it's all what my mama loved. And I do remember that this was something that she truly did enjoy serving. Um, I don't know that she loved to cook it, but she did love to serve it. So in preparation of our time together, I did just a few things. Brown sugar in sauerkraut. Mm. 
I don't even know. Sue, I'm missing my baby too. She's sleeping. I gave a, an early warning and I need to do that again. The baby is taking a nap. And if she wakes up, which I assume she's going to during our hour, I'll have to go get her. <laughs> and uh, so you'll have to just excuse me a minute when that happens. Um, but you know, sleeping babies are sacred, right? That's what we live by. So she's in the house, just not in the room. So in preparation of frying our chicken, I have thawed my boneless, skinless chicken breast. This is just a two and a half pound bag, um, Tyson brand. These are thin sliced, but I don't always get those. This just happened to be. And if they're too thick, I will cut them in half width wise. <laughs> I bet it did, Cheryl, smell it, but what else? Um, and I have just soaked them in some regular milk. If I had buttermilk, I would use that, but I don't, and I didn't take the time today to make my own buttermilk. This is just plain milk, and they've been soaking in here about an hour or an hour and a half, okay? Um, the time doesn't really matter. Mainly, it hopefully keeps it a little bit more moist on the inside, and it helps our breading to stick, okay? I have also peeled and cubed up our potatoes. So this is one of my big catering tubs, and I have about three quarts <laughs> of chopped potatoes. Now my potatoes were really little this time in the bag, and so I'll tell you it was about two thirds of a bag of potatoes. Hey Debbie, how are you feeling? I saw earlier that you were you were doing something, right? Um, you doing all right afterwards? So these are chopped. They've also been soaking about an hour and a half, and I put some salt in the water. Hey, Lucille, potatoes are very difficult to season. Um, and so a little salt water soak goes a long way. Hey, Jacqueline, I am now just gonna pour these. You're not gonna be able to see it because it's over here. I'm gonna pour these in a colander in my sink and let them start draining. That's it, all right? Hey, Bonnie, welcome in. Robin, you love sauerkraut. Uh, Capri, you love white gravy. Me too, girl. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner, I will take some white gravy. Okay, so I peeled the potatoes, and then after I peeled them, oh good, I put them in some cold water. That helps um, to draw out some of the extra gooey starch. Can you see it? Yeah, you can. In the bottom of, I just poured that down my arm. You've never had white gravy, Bonnie. Oh, are you about to be, I don't know, maybe ruined. Hey, Carol, um, you can see this white gooey stuff in here. That's just starch off of the potatoes. So soaking them in some cold water helps draw off some of the starch. The salt just helps them have a little bit of flavor. Well, that explains it, Robin. I'm German on my mom and dad's side. Uh, German and Irish on both sides, but I just never... There are not too many really strong flavors that I like. Like I'm not a big sauerkraut and I'm not a lot of those things. <laughs> so maybe I'm just about comfort food. So the potatoes are gonna sit here and drain for just a little while so that we don't have all that water snapping and popping in the oil. And then in this tub, I just have some plain flour. I think it's about two and a half cups. I don't know, I got this much flour and we're gonna use it to coat our chicken Hey, Angie, how are you, my friend? I assume it's Angie, it could be Chris. Chris, we saw part of you today, it was exciting. <laughs> so this is just plain flour, I haven't seasoned it. I am gonna season this with my good old generic barbecue rub. I just, I love this seasoning blend. Mmm, warm bread, yeah. Um, I don't even know what it is. It's, it's this, All American Seasoning Rub by Park pork barrel barbecue. Thank you, Miss Kim. So I'm gonna give your flour, my flour, a nice dose of seasoning, probably about two tablespoons, okay? Then I'm gonna use a little bit of poultry seasoning because I like it. Um, it doesn't matter, you season your chicken breader <laughs> however you like it, but I really like I really like poultry seasoning. I could mix that in a little bit of oil and wear it as perfume probably most days. Um, anything I make that's poultry based, I'm gonna have that in there. And then I have my all purpose salt, pepper, garlic mix that I use every day in everything. 
It is one part pepper, one part garlic, either garlic powder or the granulated garlic, and two parts salt, okay? Oh, you got it, yay! And I'm gonna put about two big old teaspoons of that in there, hmm, maybe three. I don't know, season with your heart. I, I never over seasoned this stuff, so I feel like we're safe, okay? And then to cook my chicken in today, just because it's easier, I've plugged in my big old electric skillet and I'm gonna turn it on to about 350 degrees and get it started, okay? And then to fry in, you just use what you like. Now, I would normally just use my cheap, old, great value vegetable oil. This is canola oil, whatever I had in the house. And I am, I'm gonna put a layer of this in there, but I don't have enough. Hey, Miss Dina, how are you today? Um, and that's all there was in the house and I'm babysitting, so I wasn't running to the store. So I grabbed my little can of Crisco. Um, I only use this to grease cake pans. <laughs> that's all I ever use it for. Um, and I'm just gonna add it in here to the oil. You don't want to use um, olive oil. Hey, Kathy, how are you, my friend? Um, because it has a low smoke point and we're gonna keep this oil hot for a while and you don't want it to carry on and smoke. So we're not deep frying, okay? So deep frying, <laughs> um, deep frying would mean that our, our food was completely buried. Hey, Marsha, completely swimming in oil, like completely buried. We are gonna do a shallow fry, which means we're going to fry one side at a time and our oil then only needs to go about halfway up on the food, okay? So this is gonna be more than enough with the Crisco and the oil. And uh, we're just gonna let that start. Then in my skillet over here, which is gonna be our fried potato skillet, we're digging into my tub. You have that same can of Crisco. I used to buy it in the big can because I used to frost cakes a ton. And I used it in my frosting. I use half butter, half Crisco because the Crisco would hold the frosting up in hot weather. And so you did a half and half buttercream so that it didn't melt all over the place. And then I always had a big can or two or three at my house. And since I don't do cakes anymore, I don't know. This little can, well, it expired in May of 23. So you know how long it's been in my cabinets. <laughs> this is my liquid gold. This is my bacon grease jar. Um, any self-respecting Southern cook has one of these. And we collect our bacon grease as if it was to be traded on the commodities market. <laughs> it's important to us. So this is my jar. It has also lived in my fridge a very long time. And <clears throat> when I fry bacon, I let that grease cool down in my pan and it gets poured in here on top of this, okay? And it, it this lives in my refrigerator. Sometimes when everybody's home and in the holidays, um, it will actually get full. And then we have to start a second jar because we are not throwing that stuff away, I tell you what. <laughs> so we're gonna use this to fry. Um, I use it all the time. I'm gonna use about, I'm gonna use it to fry our potatoes. I think I said that. And I'm gonna use, I think this would be about a third of a cup in this skillet. Now I'm not gonna start it. Well, I may start it up. We can get everything going at once. We'll just see. I'm trying to decide. I can scoot the fryer once we get the chicken going. So I think that's what we'll do um, and arrange. Now, you remember I said that I could probably put poultry seasoning behind my ear as perfume, and that would be appealing to me. Now, if I wanted my husband to be appealed, I would take a little bit of this bacon grease <laughs> and just put it on. So maybe if I put the bacon grease into the poultry seasoning, I'd have a good all-purpose perfume. What do you think? At least all the country folk I live around would think that was okay. All right, let me make sure, nope, that all things are going here. There we go. The electric skillet is great, but you do have to actually turn it on. So I'm gonna set my bacon grease jar right here. 
we may need it again. I'm going to take my, uh, my seasoned flour. I always feel like Emeril. If you ever watched him cook, he would say, I don't know about you, but where I come from, my flour don't come seasoned. <laughs> so you got to season your flour. So that's how I feel when I'm doing this. But you want a good amount of seasoning in your breading flour. I don't think you can see it much to appreciate it. But from my perspective, I can see the seasoning in there. And you want to have enough in there that even with all of your flour, you still see of that. Yeah. Um, my, my dad's dad died of a heart attack. My dad's dad. My husband's dad died of a heart attack. My dad had so many health issues, nobody's really sure what finally got him, but it too. Okay, so you just add seasoning until you can see it. Can you see there where, if I can get in the light just right, you see here when I stir it, you can actually see the seasoning, and that's what I'm looking for, um, a good level of seasoning. You can give it a little sniff, and that might tell you too, but... You want to have enough seasoning in there that you really can see it. Okay. Now, let me let me clear a little bit of space. You can see it, Dana, good. It's hard to tell what you guys can see in our little setup here. Okay. Now that we have this stuff mixed up, I'm going to bring my electric skillet over here to the countertop so that we can see both of the pans. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn on our potato skillet and let that get really, really hot. 53 years old, that's, that's awful. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Okay, I'm gonna scoot some seasonings over so we can keep working here. I could actually put them away, but who wants to do that, right? Who really wants to do that? All right, now we have to just wait for the oil because it is a frying show. We actually have to fry, don't we? Yes, we do. Okay, let me get my shortening out of the way. Move some tools. Now this is the method for breading my chicken. You bread your chicken however you want to. A lot of people, hey Veronica, good to see you. A lot of people do a three plate method, I would call it, where they would do their, their meat and then they would have, thank you for sending me stars, you would have another liquid, either milk or egg wash, and then you would have flour. Are you gonna get trick-or-treaters? We're not gonna get any here, Christina. We talked about that yesterday. Um, I just do a two. So my chicken, like I showed you, has already been soaking in um in milk <laughs> it's it's really cold you can tell because some of the milk is like formed ice crystals and that's okay it'll still work just fine it happens about every time i make it and we're just going to take our milk coated chicken breast and give it a real good roll around in the flour now this is going to give us a good crust um let me trade you back again. Maybe I move things too soon. Um, this is gonna give us a good crust. It's not gonna be Kentucky Fried Chicken extra crispy crust. That would require that we do it again. If you want a super extra crispy chicken, you wanna do this, and then you want to go back into a liquid. Usually egg is the best. And then you want to get egg mixture on it and go back in your flour a second time. It's just not my personal preference for how I like mine. So um, this is how I do mine. Oh, uh, my grandma cooked a lot like me. I remember watching her cook. Um, like I said, my mama was not a big fan of the kitchen. Um, but man, grandma was. Okay, so I'm just shaking and padding, this one has some little like cracks and crevices in it. And I like to get some flour into all of that. 
and then I'm just stacking them up. It's not going to hurt anything. Hey, Stephanie, and this is something that we can do <laughs> while we wait for the oil to get hot. I saw on Christie's that some of you ladies were talking um, about Weight Watchers, and it should not surprise anybody that I have been through Weight Watchers any number of times. And in one of the times I was in there, the lady told, a lady told one of the funniest stories. Um, she had met her goal weight and was sharing her story. You know, when you get there, you get the privilege of talking and, and kind of sharing your personal journey. And she was not a supersized lady like some of us. She was just a little on the pudge side, right? And she said the biggest change that she had made in her lifestyle since joining Weight Watchers was that she used to come home from work, turn the grease on, and then decide what was for supper. <laughs> and after Weight Watchers, she, um, she at least thought about dinner first before she turned the grease on. <laughs> and I thought, how true. Okay, you see my bacon grease over here? Can you see that it is smoking hot? In potato frying, your oil must be screaming hot. So beware, it's going to be really loud. <clears throat> and I am just throwing those in there, and I'm going to do my very best to ignore them. <laughs> I'll see you. All right, let me run to my hands a little bit, and I want to get a tester and test our oil here and see where we are. Now, if you're a chef, you have a special thermometer for your oil. If you're a mama cook, you have a wooden spoon. And if you're going to fry, and you need to know, good afternoon, Cindy. If your oil's hot enough to fry, you take the, the butt end of your wooden spoon, you stick it in your oil, and you wanna see if it tries to fry your wooden spoon. I don't know if you can see it here or not, but it is, see that? Can you see it bubbling up around my spoon? That says that my oil is hot enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and start laying our chicken in. If they look like they got a little bit uh, soaked up. I'm just running them back through the flour. Hey, Christina, I'm glad you could see it. Hey, Miss Michelle. So I'm just gently laying it in. And then we'll get these last two. <laughs> yeah, the baby is taking a nap. I assume she will wake up and make her appearance before we get done here. All right. Move that one in there. And this one is big. I don't know. I don't know if I can rearrange that or not. Okay. But we're going to try. Because it seems terrible to run a second round for just one little chicken breast, right? So let's, let's rotate the stocks here. All right, there we go. Okay. Now we're done with the milk. I almost poured that on me. That would have scared me. We're finished with the milk. We're not finished with the flour. Don't get rid of it, we need it. We're just gonna put it over here and let it rest there. And I'm gonna wash the breading. I think you'll see her. If she sleeps the entirety of our time together, we have 38 minutes left. She's already been asleep almost an hour. Um, I will be very surprised if she sleeps that long. Okay, frying chicken to me is a mathematical process. I like to give it a solid, you're not gonna believe this, five minutes per side. Now for these thin boneless chicken breasts, that's enough time. It may not be enough time if you have chicken pieces that still have the bone in because they can be thick. We are making pan fried chicken, fried potatoes, and we're gonna make pan gravy when we're done with that. You always bake it. I, for the longest time, 
just refused to fry anything because of the mess, honestly. This helps a lot because it's deeper and it doesn't make so much of a mess. So, okay. So, I got our potatoes chopped, but I did not get my onions chopped. So, hang with me while I chop up an onion. And they don't take near as long to cook as the potatoes do. So, we are not going to put them in until um, the potatoes are nearly done. So, a fairly good-sized dice. There's Nala. She's hoping for something good. She counts on me to drop something. <laughs> now, when I am eating bacon, when I'm making it to eat for me for breakfast, I always bake it. I like the texture, and I like that it's flat very much. Um, but even from that, I can save the grease off of that. And I do pour it off of my baking pan. Okay. <laughs> this little bowl right here has been a member of my kitchen staff for about 20 years. This is a Tupperware onion keeper. And it is meant, obviously it's shaped like an onion, right? To hold your onion. But it's meant to slide in along your kitchen shelf and hang on your uh, refrigerator shelf. And this thing, I tell you, it's been around longer than most of my children. Okay. You can see our chicken is doing pretty well. It's working its way up around. We know it's getting close to flipping. Can you see right here? I think you can. We're starting to see a crust form up around the sides. So that's telling us it's getting close. Two and a half minutes, according to my watch. The secret to a decent fried potato that I really struggle with is you just have to leave it alone as much as possible. So they've been going about five minutes. I shake them to loosen them. And we do a little flip. And I want you to see that they're starting to get crusty. <laughs> a Tupperware was part of my mom and grandma's kitchen and it's still a part of mine um, yes potatoes now these potatoes they will not get crispy if you stir them too much they will get soft and mushy and you will have something between a fried potato and a mashed potato when you're done the only way to get a crispy, crunchy, fried potato is to leave them sit every time you toss them until they get... Ugh, until they get the crispy on them. See that? Um, that's the only thing I can flip like that. <laughs> it's the only thing. So don't, don't hold me to it for any other thing. But a big pan of potatoes, I can flip those over. I also am going to take my salt, pepper, and garlic mix. And about every time I flip them, I'm going to season them. Potatoes eat spice. So every time you turn them, you could hit them again, and you should hit them again with seasoning all the way through the cooking. I don't know how potatoes eat spices. I just know they do. <laughs> I just know they do. Hello, how are you? Welcome, welcome. All right, we are 18 seconds away from our five minute mark on our chicken. Now, if I was feeding my family immediately, right, I would take this directly out of here and we would eat it, duh. <laughs> but we're not. So I'm gonna put my oven, hang on, we gotta wait forever for the temperature to get where I want it, on about 220 degrees. And when our chicken is done, I'm going to transfer it into the oven just to stay warm, okay? My timer went off, it's time to flip.
Ooh, that one looks really good. Looky there. There you go. All right. <laughs> Standing ovation. Yeah. I'm going to reset my five minute timer. And at the end of my five minute timer, this chicken will almost certainly be done. Um, and if, like I said, if we were going to eat it right away, I would pull out the thickest one and cut into it. I don't trust my meat thermometer when my food is sitting in hot oil. Okay. So I would definitely pull one out and cut it open. Since these are going into a warm oven for quite a while until we have dinner, if they're not 100% cooked through from the grease, they will finish um, in there. <laughs> this is one of this is one of my favorite tools. This is a big old that's what I call it a big old electric skillet. Okay, you guys ready? Show number two. Flip and season. Two good pinches of seasoning every time we flip the potatoes. All right, and you can see now that a few more of them are browned. Frying potatoes is an act of patience. <laughs> it really, really is. Now, most of the time, I take my potatoes before I fry them and I bake them. I put my potatoes in the microwave for four to five minutes. So. You know, oh, it's sizzling. You hear that? Sucking air somewhere. That was weird. Um, and I kind of cook them a third of the way, and then they fry a little bit faster. Now, today, the baby was happy for a minute in her little seat, and I was moving as fast as I could to run through my prep work and I just peeled them raw, and then I wasn't gonna try to cook them. So these are gonna take a little bit longer, and I'm not gonna try. Um, <laughs> do you hear that air rushing? That is something in my burner, doing something weird. Of course it is. I'm here cooking with you. Of course something weird is gonna happen. So let me grab my baking pan out that I've got in here. Okay, so when our chicken comes out from the frying oil, we're gonna put it on a cooling rack, a wire rack, inside of a cookie sheet. So I'm gonna put a paper towel down just to catch grease, okay? and then my cooking rack. And I'm gonna put my fried chicken on that so that it can stay warm in the oven without getting, I wanna say gooky. What's the word I'm looking for? I don't want it to get wet. I want it to be able to air, air warm. We're not air frying, maybe air warm um, while it's in the oven, okay? And then another grandma trick, if you can't find the lid to your pan, just throw a baking pan on it. I guess that works too. <laughs> yes, Capri, I want it to remain crispy and not get soggy. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So, minute and a half for us. Exactly, Kimberly. So that's what we're going to do. And then we just have to be patient. So hard to be patient. But once we get our chicken out, we will transition over and I'll show you how to start the gravy. And hopefully the potatoes get done in the next half hour. They're a little bit iffy. Um, even when I par bake them, sometimes it takes as many as 30 minutes to get a good fried potato. It's not a fast potato. And so from raw, they can take, if you want them good, and I do, because I like my potatoes a lot, you're gonna want 40 or 45 minutes. You could bake them in the oven in the same amount of time you can fry a good pan of potatoes, unfortunately. <laughs> I wish I had the excuse to say, well, at least they're fast when I fry my potatoes, but I can't even say that. Still takes a while. All right, 28 seconds. We can start the countdown. The oven's warm. Show 
shake, shake, shake. You have to leave the potatoes. Yeah, you feel like you need to keep them company, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, there's our timer. So I'm going to look because I want it to be beautiful, right? And there is our beautifully fried chicken breast. If I think it could use a little more browning, you can safely flip it over and just give it another minute or two. Let me turn you back over there. Yep, I will go through how we did it. I sure will. Oh, that one's beautiful. Okay, so I love the way this one looks. So it's ready to come out. I like this one. This one is really thick on that one side. Look at that. Look at that beautiful color. That one is a monster. It is a big piece of chicken. Okay. This one wants to give me its spreading and I don't want to take it. Okay, there we go. All right, so. Let me get it for you to show you. Here is our pan of fried chicken breasts. All right, that's how they look. And I'm gonna slide them into my warm oven, 220 degrees, and they are pretty safe to stay there until we're ready to eat, okay? Now, let me find... I am embarrassed to tell you how much time I spend before these lives trying to make sure I have everything I need and how frustrating it is that I never have everything I need. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so glad you hang out with me in the kitchen. Okay, so we're going to make our gravy in this chicken pan, but obviously we don't need this much grease. So I'm just ladling it out. And I am ladling it in to a microwave cooking bowl because it will, it can stand the heat of this hot grease, okay? Don't put it in anything cold in glass because that will shatter or can shatter. And don't put it in anything too thin that will melt. <laughs> put it into an oven safe receptacle to cool down if you gotta have that pan. And we do, because we're gonna make some gravy. Okay, so I've ladled out this much, and I'm just going to set it aside to cool, and I've left in, I think, about three tablespoons of the grease and all of the bits, and I'm just taking my seasoned flour, the same stuff I seasoned the chicken with, and I'm putting some in there. You saw that technical measurement, that was about two handfuls. You wanna add flour to your grease until your, I'm gonna turn this down, which means I gotta rotate it. So hang on a minute. Okay. You want your oil and your flour to not be completely solid, but you don't want grease floating in it, okay? I don't know how else to tell you how thick or thin to make your roux, this is gonna thicken your gravy. But do you see this little corner? It sloshes just a little bit when I go by there. So I'm just gonna sprinkle in another pinch of flour because that is gonna be floating grease in my gravy, and I don't want floating grease in my gravy. That is looking really pretty. We're starting to get some good color. I think we're gonna make it in time, okay? And then you want to cook this. <laughs> well, Andrea, that was my job then. I did well. I did well if you want fried chicken now. You can just continue to sprinkle in flour 
until you get, I call this a slurry. Do you see this? It's moving around in my pan. It's not little nuggets, right? And it is, it leaves a mark in my pan. It's not flowing back together. And it is well incorporated. And then you need to cook this, not long, just about two minutes or three. And that's going to make sure there's no raw flavor left to the flour. Now, my mama made her pan gravy with evaporated milk, not sweet and condensed. That'll be gross. Evaporated milk. Now, she had Milnot and only Milnot. This is Great Value or Baker's Corner evaporated milk. Hey, Teresa, how are you? And I, it says shake well right on the can. You got to follow the directions and you got to shake well. <laughs> All right. I'm going to have to turn that back up just a little bit. Um, and get that going a little higher to make our gravy. It's always a guessing game. I'm gonna move it back up to about 325 until we at least get all of the milk incorporated. All right, see if I can get my little lid puller to pull this lid off, but I may not be able to today. Because <laughs> that's just the way my day's going today. There we go. All right, so we've got that coming. I'm gonna let it go another minute because I wanna see it bubbling. And it is not. You can see that I turned the heat down a little too much and it's it's just now starting to re-sizzle. All right, another shake of the taters. Here we go. And can you see now the color that we're starting to get on more and more of our potatoes? These are about three quarters of the way to cook. So now I'm gonna sprinkle in that whole onion that I chopped up. If we put the onions in too soon, they'll just disappear. And I do like, I like a piece of onion every once in a while in my potatoes. So I let them cook about three quarters, two thirds of the way through. Then I add my onions and start mixing them in. Okay, I had a whisk, I really did. Now I have two. Okay, are you ready? Let's make some gravy. Turn you around a little bit. So you can see now it's nice and brown. The darkness of your roux is gonna determine the color of your gravy. So if we were in Louisiana and we were making one of their gumbo dishes, we would keep going even darker brown than this. Okay? And I'm just gonna start whisking in my evaporated milk. Don't lose heart, it looks terrible, but we're not done. We mix that into our roux and it's gonna get just like paste. Ooh, I just formed some, did you see that? Okay, now, because it's evaporated milk, it is twice, it's twice as thick as regular whole milk, so you go in with a can of water. And you work that and work it and work it until you don't have any lumps. And I do. <laughs> I got lots of little lumps. So I'm just whisking those up, breaking them down. And now I'd like to really slow it down. So on my stove top, if I was using my regular burner, I would right now have it down on about a three, a low medium, because I think it's better if you give it a little bit of time to develop its flavors and its thickness, okay? All right, there we go. I also feel very confident that I don't have enough liquid. <laughs> so I'm gonna get my milk out, just my regular old milk. You can use buttermilk, you can use whole milk, you can even use heavy cream if you really deserve a treat. Uh -oh. 
the only time, yeah, you just have not cooked your roux long enough. Okay, now that we're boiling, you kind of see how thick things are going to get. You see that? And now I'm still able to make a path. You see that? In my gravy, which means it's going to be too thick. So about half a can, I don't know, maybe a third, because we can continue to add it as it cooks and develops. There is no science to this. I don't know how to tell you exact measurements. You put onions in it, Lucille, I love onions. I would put them in anything, so I would love that. Okay, tater time. Push them back on there. Oh yeah, and I'm really getting it. Now we're starting to get some that are getting that really rich, dark color. So now we're just finishing them. We're letting them cook right along with getting our onions softened up. Okay. All right, and we're just stirring. I'm thinking, guys, we have made an amazing dinner in 45 minutes. Now, come on. Miss Rachel Ray got famous all around the world for doing a 30-minute meal, right? We have cooked serious food, serious comfort food, um, in 45 minutes. A grandma-style meal in just 45 minutes. Okay. I'm slowly just adding more and more. I'm probably going to wind up with this whole can of milk in this gravy, but I'm doing it in about thirds so that if they start to get too thin, I, you just stop. <laughs> you just stop. Okay, so it's an eyeball game. Okay, now, now that I've about got all of my milk in my gravy, you know that we used our seasoned flour to make this, but I don't know if my gravy tastes right. So now, now that we've about got all of our milk stirred in, it's time, now it's time to taste it and see where we are with the seasoning. <laughs> oh, Sue, I, so, <laughs> gravy is one of those things that I either don't have enough or I have enough for 25. It's one of those things, because, right, you get a little heavy with the flour and you're feeding the nation, right? Okay, so just a little test for your gravy. If you pull just a plain old metal spoon through your gravy and you pour it off, you want your gravy to coat your spoon, okay? It's not even dripping, right? And that's about the right consistency for your gravy. This needs some more seasoning. It needs pepper, <laughs> right out of the can pepper. I'm fancy that way. And it needs salt and quite a bit of salt. So <laughs> it comes right out of the can at my house. We don't mess around. And I'm gonna go in with about a teaspoon of salt, okay? If we taste our seasoning before we're done adding the milk in, we won't have an accurate taste, of course, because the milk is gonna tone that down every time we add it and stir it in. Okay, I smell the potatoes. Once they get to this stage, they need to be flipped more often because they start browning up faster, okay? Now, you, just, you decide for your family how crispy and crunchy do you like your potatoes. We like them pretty crunchy. So I like mine to have, like this one's driving me crazy, right there. Every time I flip the potatoes, this poor little pale potato winds up on the top. <laughs> and so he's not getting brown on his little white underbelly there. But you decide for you how crispy you like it. <laughs> yeah, I always just use the can. Okay, you can see that my gravy has thickened up one more time. So in goes the rest of the milk. And I'm calling this good, okay? When does your gravy stop thickening? When you turn the heat off. <laughs> so 
this, I know that this is my last milk I want to add to it. So it was a can of evaporated milk, a can of water, and then a can of regular milk. Okay. When this gets nice and combined and cooked, it's time to just turn the skillet off. And that will stop the thickening process. Now it will um, thicken as it cools. So we're not eating until 5.30, two hours from now at least, two hours from now. It's going to be thick by then, too thick. I'm just going to stir in a little bit of milk or even a little bit of water and just loosen it up and heat it through one more time. Okay, that's how we're going to get there. All right. Okay, so this is looking pretty much right. Let me show you on the spoon. I'll use the same spoon I tasted with because we're at my house, not at my restaurant, right? Okay, again, it's coating my spoon very slow to drip off the bottom. You see that? Just barely. Thick, thick, thick drip off the spoon. So that's about right for our texture. So I'm just unplugging my skillet and I'm just gonna let it sit here. I don't wanna put my lid on right now while it's still cooking so much and steaming so much because I don't want the condensation. I don't want it to go up to the lid, turn to water drops and fall down into my gravy. I don't want that. I want it to cool itself enough in the skillet that when I put the lid on, it's not gonna do so much condensing on the lid. Now, I will tell you that my skillet that my potato's in is pretty dry of grease. Um, we've about cooked it all in. So if, if I wasn't happy with the crispiness of my potatoes at this step, I would put a little bit more bacon grease or oil in the skillet because it's not going to crisp up very easily in a dry skillet. It needs something to fry into. So I'm just gonna take a little spoon, well, a knife blade, because that's what I got, and I'm gonna dig a hole in the middle of my potatoes, and I'm just gonna drop about another tablespoon of oil in there. Can you hear the difference now? Can you hear that? You hear that how that is beginning to sizzle and cook. That means we can get a little bit more browning out of it because we get the fat. You gotta have some fat in there to get a crispy fried object. So now that that has melted, I'll just distribute it amongst my potatoes and give it just another minute to go. And then I think you want to see a, a finished plate. We'll put it all together. Let me grab. We can get a chicken breast out of the oven. They're done. Let me clear a little space here. And grab some bread from yesterday. This is our homemade bread that we just made yesterday. And we've got that slice that we sliced off to show you. Thank you, Dana. I love, I love to do things, but I really do love teaching people how to do them. And I hope that, I hope that it's understandable and something that you, whenever you watch me do something, I hope, I hope that at the end of any video you watch, you'll be like, oh, I could do that. That's not so bad. That's not so hard. All right, move it, Miss Nelly. I'm getting in the refrigerator. Making a bunch of noise. Because that's just what I do. And since we have a minute, I made it. Here's the lentil soup from yesterday. So let me find. Excuse me, you don't have spoon. So this is our hearty lentil stew. It's cold out of the fridge. Um, but this is what it looks like when it's all done. Now, when you heat it up, it gets a little bit juicy, a little bit juicier, but this is the texture. So there is our finished lentil stew. And my husband, my daughter, and I all ate it last night. My husband took it for lunch today, and my son came over and had it for lunch today. So we've had five meals, yes, five meals out of this 
pot of soup. And I would dare say we could almost get five more. I think, I think. Okay, slide it back in the fridge. Shake the potatoes one more time. Oh, yes. All right, I'm going to turn them off. Now, this is how we like them. We almost want to be able to see what, what some people might constitute as burnt <laughs> in there. We like a few of those bits. I like every finish of a fried potato in my pot of potatoes. I really, really do. The baby is still sleeping. Shh, I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. All right. So here's one of my family plates. I use good old Melmac plates. Anybody else have Melmac plates still? I'm gonna snatch this little, uh oh, that's the one that wants to give up its skin. There we go. So here's one of our pan fried chicken breasts on there. Scoop up some potatoes. Okay, so this is how our variety um, of potato texture is. Can you see that? That some of them are very soft and pale and other ones you would almost constitute as overcooked. That's how I like them. That's really how I like them. Okay. Now our gravy, see it's already trying to form a little skin, but when you reheat it, that goes away. And we're just gonna scoop a little bit. And in my house, it goes over everything. <laughs> you cannot not have the gravy. So it would get drizzled over the potatoes and over the fried chicken. Just, just like that and it would be a salute to fried foods. Okay, let me scoot a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and set the lid on this now because I think it has cooled off enough not to be too bad, and we will be ready for dinner. Here's our piece of homemade bread that we made yesterday, and it's a salute to carbs, y'all. The best food in the world. At our house, we say the best thing you can have is carbs soaked in fat, and I think we have achieved that today. Now, tonight for supper, I will add a vegetable because, you know, I just can't not. And I will do my speedy green beans. Um, these are um, embarrassingly simple and really fast. Take some good old canned green beans. For my family, it takes four cans of green beans. You drain three of them and you leave the juice on one and you put them in one of those microwave bowls right over here that I just used for the oil. A microwave safe bowl okay this one is not currently safe it's full of grease that's disgusting um but you dump your three cans of drained green beans and your one can of green beans with juice in there you're going to add about three tablespoons of butter and you're going to add about a teaspoon of the chicken base now i use that pasty chicken base right so that's what i would put in it if you don't have that, but you do have um, a chicken bouillon cube, you would want to do two chicken bouillon cubes in there. So three cans drained green beans, one can with the juice, about three tablespoons of butter, about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of either chicken base or two chicken bouillon cubes, and a sprinkling of Italian seasoning, just the mix. Throw that in your microwave for four minutes, four minutes. At two minutes, pull it out and give it a stir because your chicken base or your bouillon may not be incorporated. It'll be melted by then, but maybe not incorporated. And then, do you like nor? We always buy it at Sam's, so I never get nor. Yeah, we just always get <laughs> Sam's, Sam's Club. And then, so at two minutes, stir them up so that that chicken base or bouillon gets incorporated in. Give it another two minutes. I know that sounds crazy, but they are so good. And they cook a little bit um, in the microwave. They'll almost taste like they've been slow cooked on the stove. Green beans 
with bacon grease are my old classic and I do love them. I don't like them in the microwave. If I need fast green beans, I do that. If I have all day for green beans, I will do the same thing on the stovetop with some bacon grease instead of the chicken base. And I will chop up a few little potatoes. That's how my grandma did it. She would put her potatoes and green beans together in the pressure cooker. And you'd hear that thing all day long, but they were so good. They were so, so, so good. Well, I wish you guys were here for supper. That's all I've got to say, because we are having, this makes me think of my mama. She's been gone 10 years almost, and I still miss her all the time. But sometimes when something comes along that really reminds me of her, makes me miss her more. But now, in the beginning of grieving someone, all of that stuff hurts, you know, it just hurts. 10 years later, it's almost like I get a minute with her and it's pleasing, it's comforting. Mm. And she would like those potatoes. <laughs> and she'd be proud that I finally learned how to make a decent gravy. Go. Oh. Let me grab my knife and show you the chicken. There's the tail end of our fried chicken breast. The breading is hanging off. It's got a little bit of gravy on it. It's, it's not dry at all. If it was, I couldn't eat it. It's still crunchy, even though it's been in the oven. It's really good. All right. So, my fried potatoes are going to sit right here. I could throw this skillet in the oven as well to keep them warm, but I can reheat them in a minute. The gravy I'll reheat. The chicken will be great in the oven. And supper will be on. If you'll be here in a couple hours, come on over. Thank you, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great night.